Everyone. My name is Yasmin Lee. I'm currently a junior here at Walker College. I major in studio art and minor in digital media and film studies. This is my presentation, When They See Her. And we're, we're going to do a screening of my original short film, Black Girl Anxiety. So, throughout, the, um, throughout the history of print and cinematic media, the misrepresentation of black life in America was perpetuated through advertisements, minstrel shows, and propaganda, and word of mouth, of course. Early developments of negative depictions of African Americans, as seen on the screen, um, depicted African Americans as unlucky, unintelligent, impoverished, and, be and beastly. Many studies have revealed the harmful effects of racialized individuals seeing negative stereotypical images of themselves in the media. Yes, these racist depictions um, fed into the misrepresentations between both genders and sexes of um, the African American community. However, these misrepresentations affect, deeply affected how people view black womanhood as well as um, black women's access to femininity. As a person who exists within the intersections of race and gender, i.e. me being a black American woman, Racist caricatures like these exemplify the limited access black women have to the American to American femininity. These stereotypes haunt American media to this day. Um, these stereotypes, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. In contemporary spaces, the call for displaying and communicating authentic experiences of black women still persists. As a young artist and fellow feminist, I have made my own efforts and strides towards contributing to this. In other words, in order to confront the, the false representations of black life and the denial of femininity black women um, have faced in the United States, my short film, um, Black Girl Anxiety, engages with the relationship between black womanhood, femininity, and living with, um, with, within a racialized body. So now we must ask ourselves, why are these stereotypes harmful, and how do they affect black women and other African American aid fat folks? Stereotyping, according to Patricia Hill Collins in her book, Black Feminist Thought, stereotyping is a tool used to punish individuals who challenge the status quo. Hill goes on to say that having the agency to define societal values and representations is having a major instrument of power. When this power is taken away from oppressors within elite, Groups. The result is the loss of agency amongst black feminine folks and the birth of discriminatory figures exploiting their power and manipulating the ideas of what black womanhood can look like and, how, and who has access to femininity. This reconstruction of black womanhood was not initially authored by other black women. It was promoted by individuals who had the desire to mystify and objectify black women and their experiences. The root of this exploitation and stereotyping came from slavery when slave masters promoted images like Jim Crow, Mammies, Uncle Toms, Samos, and Coons to quote unquote prove that, um, that slavery couldn't have been immoral if black people enjoyed being servants to white people, or if black people were so unruly that they needed white um, masters in their lives. So racist, um, oh, excuse me, <laughs> racist imagery implied white slave masters um, had to protect black on black slaves from themselves. So, due to black women and aid fat black folks um, disrupting the white patriarchal system, those who oppress black bodies and civil rights for black people created stereotypes to devalue black women and their experiences. Negative images of black women not only discredited their voices when demanding civil rights, these negative images minimize the seriousness of the disparities black women face even within their own communities. Whether it be domestic violence or not having access to equitable education, the caricatures the average non-black American saw justified the mistreatment of anti-racist black women. So we're going to go over some of the stereotypes that I included within my short film. First up, the token um, black person, aka the Oreo. So according to Urban Dictionary, one of my favorite sources, um, <laughs> Oreo is a stereotype used to describe a black person who is black on the outside and white on the inside. 
black being the, um, the color of their skin and white meaning characteristics of whiteness. The Oreo is typically the tokenized black friend within a predominantly white um, setting. When Dean, um, when Dean does the designated Oreo, this individual becomes the monolithic voice of the black community, meaning the Oreo has to bear the responsibility of speaking up for the, on the behalf of the entire black community whenever their non-black friends either ask questions regarding blackness or microaggressive questions about blackness. And then, oh yeah, by the way, um, the examples that I have on the screen, they are from mostly films, um, and some of the um, stereotypes that they depicted in these films subverted these stereotypes in subtle ways, if not explicitly. Okay, so up next we have the Jezebel stereotype. Um, her thing is just basically being like hypersexual at all times, and the only agency that she has is by invoking power over men. Um, and what's unfortunate is that she's a very flat and non-dimensional character. Therefore, she as she doesn't really have like a value beyond the se sexual gratification that she might be getting from exerting power over men. And then we have the angry black woman trope, which um, at the bottom is not from a film; it's actually from reality TV. Um, but yeah, so with this stereotype, it actually was birthed from the sassy mammy. Um, stereotype that basically with the mammy trope, the black woman was asexual and kind of sassy, but her main goal was just to protect the white family. She did not take care of her own children. So this evolved into the angry black woman trope where um, angry black women, they cannot be seen as passionate or trying to defend something worth defending. They are only angry and their anger is exerted as well. Um, like, exerted onto their families as well. So they are further, like, you know, further, they're distanced from the idea of what the white maternal figure looks like. Someone who is fit for marriage, deserves to be feminine, and deserves to be treated with, like, gentleness and respect. And then we'll go into the ghetto and ratchet stereotype. So I included um, three women that were popularized as memes throughout um, the 2020s, like, well, now we just started. Well, the 2010s and the 2020s. If you guys remember Vine from back in the day before um, TikTok started, we had a lady um, by the name of Kayla Newman who went by Peaches Monroe on Vine. She started this trend by saying, like, my eyebrows are on fleek, as in my eyebrows look amazing. Like, you know, her makeup looks great. But people associated, like, phrases like this and other acts that were closely related to blackness as ratchet and ghetto rather than, you know, the trends that they are because most of these women, they have gone viral and I would like to state that all of them have used this, um, have used their platform to, to make an entrepreneurial um, opportunity for themselves. They've all branded what they got popular for and made money off of it too. So yeah, let's watch my movie, My Girl and Diary. <laughs>
and watching the full film on um, YouTube, feel free to type in this phrase to find it. Um, and if you would like to watch it on Vimeo, type in that phrase to find it. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.